Greetings and salutations folks and welcome once again as always to another helping of Mr H's Hot Pot. Today I'm joined by Mrs H. Hello. And little Toby James as you can hear in the background. And we've come to Billings today which is a little village that today is in Merseyside. Pre-1974 it used to be in Lancashire. Now Billings is famous for a number of things. One of them being Billings Rain. Mrs H has heard me talk about Billings Rain many times, haven't you Mrs H? I have, yeah. And for anyone who doesn't know, it's that fine stuff that wets you. However, today the sun is shining, there is no sign of rain, Billings or otherwise. Now what are we doing here in Billings today? Well we've come to St Aidan's Church which is at the side of me and that was built in 1718. And apparently, Mrs. H, there is supposed to be a vampire's grave in this churchyard. Oh, really? And we're stood at the side of it. It's this one here. It's rather eerie, gothic looking, coffin shaped grave. And supposedly, there's a vampire in there. And it gets its legend because of these symbols that are on here, Mrs. H, which is obviously the skull and bat's wings there. And I must admit, it does look a little bit eerie, doesn't it? It does. Very Dracula-esque. However, is the story true? Well, this is the grave of George and Kitty Smith, who passed away in 1720, so it's one of the oldest graves in this churchyard. Now, obviously, due to it being coffin shaped, that's where it got its Gothic legend from. But vampires only came into our folklore, really, in 1897 with Bram Stoker's famous Dracula story. So when these people was laid to rest, however they passed away, it had nothing to do with vampires. Simply, vampires hadn't even been thought of in 1720. But what about these symbols? Where do they come from? Well, let's take a closer look at them and see if we can find out, shall we? The death said is pretty explanatory. Obviously, that's the person who's passed away. Now, these here, that do look like bats wings what they're actually is angels wings taking the person to the next life or onto heaven depending on your beliefs and at the back of it you can't really see it very well because it's faded due to age but that's a curtain you can just make out the curtain rails there and what that's supposed to be is the person passing through the veil and onto the next life that symbolism is still used today at cremations you know when you see the coffin disappear through the curtains or the curtains close it's supposed to represent the person passing on to the next life apparently oh, right, okay. now there's a local legend regarding this here which is a snake that goes round it and the story is that george smith apparently was bitten by a snake up on billing hill when he worked in a quarry and his wife was so grief stricken that she committed suicide now that story cannot be true and i'll tell you why it can't be true certainly the bit about his wife because if you committed suicide back in the day you wasn't allowed to be buried in consecrated ground as it was seen as a front to God that you'd squandered the greatest gift that he could bestow upon you, which was life. So that bit is not true. Regarding the snake biting him, there's not many poisonous snakes in the UK, is there? No, not many. So it could have had an allergic reaction, Mrs H, it could be that, but it's more than likely it is known as an Arubus, that. And what that represents is the circle of life. It's eating its own tail. Yeah. And other symbols that you'd see doing this is a dragon. And the idea is that it's never ending. It's the circle of life. You're born, you pass away. Now above, there would have been an inscription once, which would have been Memento Mori. We've actually seen this in Scotland. You know when we went to that Wicker Man filming location? Oh, yeah. The words Memento Mori in Latin was on the graves there. And what that simply means is remember death. And the idea is that you must do the most with your life because you must remember that eventually we're all going to end up here. Mm -hmm. So that's where this symbolism comes from. And they fell out of favour, these sort of symbols, once the Victorians came because they industrialised and standardised the funeral industry. And many of the things that we do today come from there. And these symbols have just fallen out of fashion and obviously they're unusual. I mean, this is grade two listed, this. Is it? Yeah, apparently. I've never known of a grade being no, that's unusual. graded before, but apparently it is because it's so unusual. Now, who these people was, nobody knows. It's, they aren't even recorded as being buried in here. So are they actually buried here or is this just a memorial? I them? should imagine if you look at the concrete there oh, that's been added since, you yeah. can see where it's cracked. Because the ground beneath it's sunk. Oh, yeah. So I would say that they are buried here. 
You know, there's all kinds of unusual inscriptions now that you just wouldn't use today. The best one is over near there, and we'll go and take a look at that now. Now, another grave that shows you how the attitudes towards epitaphs and things have changed since the 1700s is this one over here, Mrs. H, which is right by the gate, and you have to walk over as you go into the churchyard. Yeah. Which in itself is something that's odd, because you don't do it anymore, do you? No. You know, it always feels as though you're stranded on the dead by walking over gravestones. Yeah, I hate walking over gravestones. Well, this one here is to Jonah Cowley of Billinge, who was buried here in 1716. And his epitaph reads, All of you that live here and pass by, as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, so you must be. Therefore, prepare to follow me. And that is just something that you wouldn't see on a gravestone nowadays, would you, Mrs. H? No, you wouldn't. And I think it's also a Megadeth lyric from the thrash band, the rock band, that's printed <laughs> by Dave Mustaine. Yeah, it's in one of his songs. I can't remember which song off the top of my head. If you do know, put the comment below. But apparently one story is that someone chiselled underneath one of those epitaphs, not here, it's somewhere else in the UK, to put, follow you, I am not content until I know which way you went. <laughs> Anyway, Hot Potters, that was just a quick video, really, just showing you the vampire's grave here in Billinge. If you do decide to come and visit it yourself, as always, please be respectful, because even though 300 years have passed, it is still someone's final resting place. Anyway, we're going to get off now and enjoy the rest of the day, aren't we, Mrs. H? We are, yes. So, until the next time, from myself, Mr. H, it is bye-bye for now.